Problem number seven is asking us to find the area inside the larger loop and outside the smaller loop of the curve r equals one minus two cosine theta. Then it only wants that area in the first and second quadrants. So that's a lot of information to take in, but in this case, what we need to do first is if we have a polar graph, it's good to plot it out and see how the shape is actually forming. So to plot stuff in polar, I usually make a chart. So I make my theta and I make my r columns. So I want to figure out theta values to plug into so that I can get r values and plot it on a polar graph. But the first thing I usually want to do is I usually need to figure out where the zeros are. So the way I figure out where the zeros are is I look at my equation and I plug in r equals zero and I figure out the theta values that correspond with it. So solving for r equals zero in this case, so this is at r equals zero, I end up with cosine of theta equals one half. And that's just by doing algebra. Cosine of theta is positive one half in the first and fourth quadrant. And to figure out where those are, if you look on a unit circle, theta is equal to pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So again, we're only looking at cosine in this case, so there are two possible theta values that give us um, cosine theta equals uh, 1 half. So at this point, when cosine of theta is 1 half, my r value will be 0. So what I can do is I can go ahead and I can take these two values and I can plug them into my little chart here. So I'm going to try to leave myself some space because we're going to populate the spaces around it with other points that are non-zero so that we can get a good uh, shape of the graph. But I do at least know at these points that my r should be equal to zero. So those are good starting points in this case. Now, when you're graphing in polar, unless it says otherwise, you're looking at a domain of zero to two pi. So I'm also going to include my endpoints, zero, to 2 pi. And I'm going to, going to include some points in the middle as well. So pi over 3 is less than pi over 2, so I'll pick my major axes in this case of the unit circle, pi over 2. Also pick pi, and I'll pick 3 pi over 2 too. Okay, so that gives us about 7 points in this case. That should be more than enough to try to figure out what the graph is doing. So let's go ahead and let's start figuring out what the corresponding r values are for our function. So if I plug in theta equals 0, I get 1 minus 2 cosine of 0. That's 1 minus 2. So my radius is negative 1. Pi over 3, we already knew it was 0. Pi over 2, if I plug that in, I get cosine of 0. So my r value is equal to 1. If I go ahead and plug in pi, I end up with 1 minus 2 cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So that negative 2 and that negative 1 combined to form positive 2. 1 plus 2 gives us 3. 3 pi over 2 in this case, cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, so I end up back at 1. And when I plug in 2 pi, that should be the same value as 0, so I end up getting negative 1. Cool. So now I have a bunch of points that I can plot on a polar graph. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Okay. So at a theta value of 0, I have a negative radius. So remember what that means is that if theta equals 0 is this line here, if my, if my radius is negative, it's going to be reflected on the other side. So even though theta equals 0 over here, because my radius is negative, my first point actually starts over here. Pi over 3, I know that that's 0. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my little curvy line and I'm going to come back right to the origin. Pi over 2 is equal to 1. So pi over 2 is this axis, and I have a positive radius. So all I have to do is figure out about where, pi, uh, where radius equals 1 is. It's probably right about there. So again, I'm going to draw another kind of curvy line out to there. At pi, my radius is equal to 3. So 3 is way out here along the pi axis. So I can go ahead and draw my line to there. 3 pi over 2 is equal to 1. So 3 pi over 2 is this axis right here. And 1 is, again, probably right about there. So I'm going to come back around. I'm going to intersect with that line. 
5 pi over 3 is equal to 0, so I can come right back to the origin. And to close it off, 2 pi is equal to negative 1, which is the same point as where we started. So I just come back around and recombine with my starting point. Okay, good. So now we've got kind of a general uh, sketch of the graph. Again, it's not the greatest sketch in the world. I'm not the greatest artist. But in this case, it does give us a good kind of view of the graph. And now we might be able to picture it a little bit better when it's telling us all this information. So it does say that it wants the area inside the larger loop and outside of the smaller loop. So now that makes much more sense, right? We have a smaller loop here and a bigger loop here. So we would want all of this area inside of here. But there's a twist. It only wants it in the first and second quadrants. So the first and second quadrants are these two up here. So therefore, anything below this axis is basically not the area that we want. So if I want the area inside the larger loop and outside the smaller loop in the first two quadrants, I want this area in here. And basically up to this y-axis. OK, good. So now that we know the area that we want, we can try to figure out uh, what our area boundaries need to be. So let's go ahead and write down the formula that we're going to be using. So remember, for polar area, A is equal to 1 half integral R squared D theta. So we know what R is in this case. R is equal to 1 minus 2 cosine theta. And in this case, there's no R1 and there's no R2 because these are the same functions in this case. So we'll leave it like this. Now, what we need to do is we need to figure out what boundaries will give us the area that we want. So judging by where I drew my graph, I knew that my 0 started at pi over 3. So this was the first time I hit the 0 because I came around this direction and I landed here at pi over 3. To get to this point, I went around here to there, and that was from pi over 3 to pi. So I know that my larger loop in the first and second quadrant is bounded by pi over 3 to pi. So I can go ahead and I can write that down. So I can say that the total area I want is equal to 1 half integral pi over 3 to pi, and I'm going to leave it as r squared d theta because, again, we're not discerning between two different r's in this case. This is the same function regardless of the inner loop or the outer loop. So in this case, leaving it as r squared just leaves a little bit less algebra. Uh, again, in this case, it doesn't actually want you to solve the problem. It just wants you to set up the integral. So we're going to try to minimize the amount of work that we have to do. So now we have this area here. But the problem is that the way the area is calculated is it starts from the origin and it extends outward. So if we were to leave this expression, this would find the total area of the top half of that graph. But we don't want that. We don't want this little area of, well, area inside. So we need to figure out how to get rid of that. Well, areas are additive and subtractive. So if we can figure out what area we need to subtract out of there, we should be able to get just the area of the larger loop. So now what I need to figure out is now I need to figure out how to get this little loop of area inside of here. Well, I know that after I came to here, so this was pi, I hit 3 pi over 2 down here, and when I came back to the 0, I hit 5 pi over 3. I hit 5 pi over 3, and then to form the outer boundary of this loop on the top half of the graph, I hit 2 pi. So I know that from 5 pi over 3 to 2 pi, that's the area that I want to subtract out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define this integral, 5 pi over 3, to 2 pi. And I'm going to subtract off that area, so that way I get the total area of the outer loop but I subtract off the area of that inner loop to get the exact area that we want in this case. So by looking at the answers, we end up getting for number 7, A. And actually, I apologize. I forgot to erase that off. This is number 
7 on exam 3B? And the answer to that is A. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.